This is the RFinder B1 Plus, a full Android device with a built-in dual band two-way radio that produces real RF, so it's a real radio. It does analog, it does DMR, and it also does transmissions over IP for DMR and a couple of other things. We're gonna take a look at it today right now. Thanks for joining the channel today. My name is Jason, I'm KC5HWB. If you've followed me for any time at all, you know that I love the R-Finder device. I think it's a very forward-thinking device. It is a full Android device. It's a complete Android phone. And since it's not locked to any carrier, it has no bloatware, no proprietary apps that you can't uninstall. It'll work on any carrier, including overseas carriers outside of the USA. It actually has two SIM cards, two SIM card slots. It has two slots for two different SIM cards, so you can use it in one country and another country. And if you travel back and forth a lot, it'll just work when it's wherever. So it is a world phone. It is a fully Part 90 certified, FCC Part 90 certified radio inside the phone. So it does both dual band, two meters and 440 full open transmit. So you can use it on GMRS. I'm not saying you should but you can use it on GMRS because it is a Part 90 radio. At the end of this video, I'm gonna say a secret word which I want you to put in the comments about the R-Finder so that you can comment and I know you watched the end of the video. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is just show both of the radios, okay? This is the classic and this is the plus. Now you can see clearly right here, this one says waterproof, this one says R-Finder. Now, th the reason this one says waterproof is because this is a very old classic. This. I've had this radio since about 2018. Okay, so the class you can you can buy brand new classics today in 2022, almost 2023, and they will work just as well as this one does. But if you have a really really old device, it is up. Both of these are running the same ROM, which is the complete operating system. So they will do the same. This one has a few more features in it, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But this one, this even being like four, almost five years old, will still do all of the features of the R-Finder device that this one will do. So just FYI, it's got these uh, over here on the side of these, they've got a USB plug or USB-C plug. This one, the B1 Plus will charge via USB-C. I'm gonna plug that in here in a minute. It's got the blade connector style with the dust cover over here for speakers. This is your volume up down over here. We turn this over, it's got dual PTTs. This is the, the orange PTT button is for your radio. This one can be set up and programmed to use with apps like Zello. So you can use Zello to, with a PTT button if you want to. I've never set, set that up, but I'm told you can. This is a power button, of course. Belt clip on the back. They also make a belt loop with a little button thing that kind of snaps into and out of a belt loop. You can get one of those if you want to. Here's what they look like. Now we're gonna set up this, this B1 Plus right here is brand new. I just booted it up. It doesn't have anything on it right now. And this one here has my R-Finder memories. If we go into memories here, we can see all of these R-Finder memories that, are f that follow my call sign. The memories on the R-Finder device are sh uh, saved in the cloud. You can see right here, save memories to cloud, restore uh, memories from cloud. So I'm gonna move my memories over and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is set this up. Like I said, I just booted this up. This is the, the first boot up screen. So I don't have my R Finder or my Google account added to this device yet. Okay, so for those who are interested in, because everyone's gonna ask this, it is running Android 9. Okay, security patch January 5th of 2020. Okay, check for update. Updates are temporarily unavailable. I'm not connected to the internet right now, that's why. So let me connect to the internet. QRZ, QST is my five gigahertz network. QRZ is my 2.4. All right, now we are connected to QRZ. Okay, so, boom, Android 9. And our finder will push updates to this Android system and they'll, They'll push, uh, they, they include updates with their latest apps. Systems up to date. Currently, we're running custom build K608 DT865. The DT865 means we have a B1 Plus. Our finder B1 Plus. The ROM is dated 1118 of 2022 and it's version 10.5. If we go to my classic, which should be up to date, it, of course, the classic's running 8.1. This is running 
DT863. This is how you tell the difference between a, a B1 and a B1 Plus. This one will say DT863. This one says DT865. That 863 is a classic, 865 is a plus. So this one is a ROM from November of this year, just last month. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna put my Google account on here. Okay, so now my Google account is on here. And if I go here to Gmail, there we go, there's my Gmail, okay. Google security alert, I just logged in from a second device. Yes, I know, thank you very much. So the R Finder, there's two versions of R Finder. R Finder Pro, which you can see right there, it says R Finder P. That's what this looks like here. And this is the Pro version. You and I are not gonna use that primarily. This is made for his Pro customers because he does deal this device to Pro customers. And they set it up differently. Here's the ham radio version. It's gonna ask me for permissions. That's standard Android stuff. And now it's gonna ask me my call sign, my email, and my password for my R Finder account. If you heard that sound just there, that's that's my that's the R Finder app telling me there's an update. So we're gonna to get to that just one second. So now as soon as I log in to R Finder, it's prompting me that RF1 underscore one dot one seven delta is now update. And I know for a fact that that's the latest version of the app because that's what's running on this device. So I'm going to continue. Used to be, you had to download the APK file and sideload it from the from the side here. So it used to be you have to go click on a link from like the Facebook group or their Dropbox account and download the APK and then load it. And now it prompts you inside the app. So that's an update that was made about a year ago, something like that. And I don't know if you can see that status bar, but it is moving right there. So that was an update that was made a while back and it's one of the cool things that they offer today that they're always improving the system. They're always improving. They're adding features. If you saw Bob on my show, I had him on one of my live stream, one of my lunchtime live streams in December of 2022, just last month. And he was telling us about a lot of different new things that they're working on. So, and he takes suggestions. If you have a suggestion for something you would like to see in the R Finder app at some point, and something that the phone that the device can do, that the app can do, an idea for some sort of something, go in the Facebook group and suggest it and see what he says. They are community driven. A lot of times community driven because Android is an open source, source device. So he kind of treats the R Finder like it's open. The R Finder is not open source. It is commercial. He sells it uh, for a profit, but you know, just like Icom, Yezu and Kenwood sell their stuff for a profit. So just bear that in mind, but he does take suggestions from the community. Okay, app installed, we opened it. It just came up and it said app installed, and then I didn't switch the camera in time. <laughs> but app installed, and I clicked on open, and you can see the version of the app. It might be hard to see in the camera, but it's right here in this gray bar at the top. Another thing, and I've said this in the past before, another thing I love about the Art Finder device, it tells you what your grid square is right there. Echo Mic 12 Kilo Victor is my grid square. If you're out doing POTA, and you wanna know what grid square you're in for your logging software, it's right there. Just open the R Finder app. And this works on the device, but if you have R Finder on a regular Android or iOS device, it works with that too, Using the, assuming you have GPS capabilities added to it. So now we're going to transfer, and I wanna make sure that all of my memories are backed up, because I can't remember the last time I backed up my memories. So we're gonna go into memories here, and we're going to say, save memories to cloud, invalid user. Oh, well, maybe it logged me out. Here's what I did. I logged out of the B1 Plus <clears throat> and logged in here. And we're gonna show you this right here because if you're, if you're coming from another device, if, you got a, if you're upgrading from a classic to a B1 Plus, or if, you, if you've bought a tablet and you wanna move all your stuff over as far as the radio goes, let's see. Here's the, uh, well, so we're in the regular radio screen there, and we're gonna go to memories. And this is all the memories I have. So I've got five zones, GMRS, Deer Lease, KC5, HWB, Simplex, and Hotspot. GMRS, what I tell you about GMRS? I have GMRS 5 in there. what I tell you about GMRS? It's a part 90 radio, so it'll work on GMRS. I'm not condoning that, but it does work. Also, I just kind of like to listen sometimes. So here's my hunting lease. There's a uh, 440 repeater there. This is my DMR repeater. 
I've saved a bunch of stuff in there. This is Simplex, DMR Simplex, All-Star. That's my All-Star node. That's 146.52 and 146.400. A couple of Simplex channels we talk on. And then, hold on. Nope, I, hit, I tapped the wrong thing. And then the top zone is Hotspot. And that's my, this is just two talk groups I have for my open spot right there. I, I, that's actually outdated. I need, to, I need to redo that. So here's what we're going to do. So down at the bottom of the screen, you see save memories to cloud. And I just did this. There it goes. Memories saved to cloud right there. Now I'm going to log in over here. And I don't know if it kicks me out over there or not. So we're going to try that again. I logged out. Of, I, I logged in this minute ago. You saw me log in. I logged out as the camera was off. It's possible that my registration on the Classic just simply expired and I just had to redo it. I didn't lose anything. All of the stuff stayed in there. Okay. No, I don't want to save that. All right. Now, now I'm registered on both devices. And now that I've got this going, I'm going to try to go back into my memories on the Classic. This is the Classic. This is the plus, this is the new one. I'm going to go to memories and I'm gonna to go to save memories to cloud and it's saved. Okay, obviously it'll it's, it's logged into both places right now. And now I'm gonna go memories restore. And I did that a minute ago, but I'm gonna, I'm, I, I did it more now because there's, I, there's more in here. Restore memories from cloud. It's gonna say, it's gonna override any changes. So anything you have in there is gonna be nuked. Yes, boom, we're done. And now, oops, all five of those zones are in there like before. Hotspot, Simplex, KC5, HWB, my DMR repeater, Deer Lease, and GMRS. That right there. Apparently, the only GMRS frequency I have in there is GMRS 5. I don't know why that was in there, but okay. There we go. Okay, so we're we're logged into both of them right now. So I probably just had my, my expert, my account just had expired and I just I just needed to click on renew that's all there is to it anyway so all of my devices all of my repeaters and settings and simplex frequencies and whatnot are now in this device so now we've got the Google account registered we've got the watch this <laughs> we've got the Google account registered we've got the R finder account registered and the memories pulled down. And I'm gonna send that over there. It takes it a second when sending device parameters. I wish it was a little bit quicker here, but that's okay. And that's that right there. Now, there we go. KC5 HWB, Texas Statewide. I'm gonna guess you guys are hearing a buzz in the radio right now. And I'm on the offset. So not hearing that there. KC5 HWB, Texas Statewide, testing a uh, new radio. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll see if anybody's out there listening to me. Yep, it says, channels Texas Statewide, color code 9, time slot 2. Last heard is no nothing because we just now logged into this. All right, so now that we know that we're on the latest version of each of these, you'll notice that there's a DMR ROIP icon on the classic, but there's no DMR ROIP icon on the latest one. So the reason is because you have to set that up as well, because you have to log into Brandmeister now. That's a Brandmeister requirement. So what we can do is open up the menu here, go to DMR ROIP settings, and you'll go to continue. You must reboot the device to complete the mode switch when the compute failure do so. Okay, that's fine, continue. Now DMR ROIP. Okay, so I guess I need to reboot it now. So let's reboot it now. Restart. And then you have to log in. And I think TGIF actually has a password you have to enter also. So it'll connect via DMR ROIP to the Brandmeister network and also to the TGIF network. And as you know, if you've used a hotspot recently on Brandmeister, you have to set a custom password for your hotspot now. They used to use the password of PASSW0RD for everybody. And I, I guess they had some some hacking that was going on impersonations of people or something I don't know now you have to set a custom password on your self-care dashboard before you can log in with a hotspot or, or a repeater I assume I don't have a repeater that's connected to Brandmeister let's see so I can go over here and I can say okay 
do my ROIP settings. So that's what it should look, okay? BM United States primary. Of course, you pick the country you're in. TGI hotspot key, okay? And then permanent multi-RX groups. And you can set those yourself. So I'm going to go and set the same thing up over here. Boom. Okay, so my... F7, checking my... Okay, so it populated because you can click on this eye right here and show the TGIF hotspot key. Okay, I, I don't want to do that on camera because I, I it, that might be the same for everyone. I don't know, but it populated as soon as I entered, uh, turned on DMR ROIP mode on the B1 Plus over here on the right hand side and rebooted as it instructed me to do. It doesn't come up with my Brandmeister password because those are unique. I set the prep password myself on my self care page. But I am assuming that these are kind of all the same, or maybe they follow your call sign. I don't know. But it, it remembered my permanent multi-RX groups, which is 31770, which is the R-Finder talk group, and 31665, which is the, quote, main TGIF talk group. So now I'm going to I'm going to click on this I right here that tells me what my Brandmeister password is. Oh, yep, that makes sense. Okay. And now I'm going to click enter my Brandmeister password over here now i've got that there and now i'm going to save and close you must reboot again okay that's fine okay there we go so when the button is red you're on rf mode so i can key up my repeater right here All right there it is so we're keying up texas statewide kc5 h should be on texas statewide and now if i want to go to dmr roip i click on that Connect to Brandmeister, correct, connect to TGIF, choose Brandmeister, and the button turns blue. Now I can pick, it's on 3148 because that was the last talk group I was on. Oops, 770, set parameters. Radio ready. DMR Roy was highlighted right here. Get you a better angle of that. So DMR Roy was highlighted right there. The, Power button is blue, it says DMR Roy at the top, obviously. So we can try to key that up now. And then you're not going to see anything on that dashboard because we're not keying into the hotspot or the repeater, rather. KC5 HWB on the RFinder Talk Group testing. There's also this multi RX mode right here. You can turn that off, uh, turn that, and that's, that's your monitor or promiscuous mode. Go to groups and set which groups. Right now it's monitoring those two groups, so I can add groups to that if I want to. Multi RX, you can turn that off. So that's your promiscuous mode right there. So that's what that is. This is over IP with no hotspot except for the one that's built into the RFinder device. Well, I'm on a V1 Plus in Cozumel, Mexico on a RFinder hot chili pepper. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So multi RX is small correction. It's not exactly like promiscuous mode. You can turn on promiscuous mode when you're in RF mode, but multi RX, since you're not on RF, you're not monitoring a repeater and you can go in here and you can set the groups that you want to monitor. So it's similar to it's, it's the promiscuous mode of DMR over IP. So you can turn that off and on how you want to multi RX off. Turn off, yes, and now we're just listening to 31770, which is where I'm at there. All right, so I'm missing some features on this, and the reason is because it's on an older ROM. So now we're going to try to update the ROM. All right, so the ROM is outdated, like I said, because we're at 10.5, and if you go to tap on the menu and you go to advanced support, one of the buttons here is ROM update instructions. I'm gonna click there. When powering on your RFinder radio, the device will check to see if there's an update with the ROM. If a new ROM is available, you'll be prompted to download the ROM. Interesting, okay. Well, we didn't get that prompt. We did get it for the app but not the ROM. It should prompt you for both. I've updated this device several times with prompts that it sends me. So it should prompt you for both, the ROM and the app, when there's an update to either one. Nope, 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 I was wrong. 
I was wrong. 10.5 is the latest version of the ROM on the R-Finder B1 Plus device at the time of this recording. So at one point in time, I thought that they had matched the ROM and the app version. The app version still does match across all devices. As far as I know, it matches on, on the, the tablet. It, the, the app version definitely matches on these two. Unless you're doing beta. If you, you can choose to do beta testing in R-Finder. You can go to the Google Play Store, download the latest app, and use the latest production app, and never do beta testing if you don't want to. But if you want to do beta testing, you can join their Facebook group, get the beta versions, and that kind of thing. So it's, it's really up to you what you want to do. But the app versions match, but the ROM versions do not. I just talked to Bob, and he said that no, 10.5 is the latest version on the B1+, Plus, and it's 25.0 on the Classic, at the time of this recording, he said basically it's the difference between Android 8.1 and Android 9. And that's why the interfaces also look differently. Let me pull that back up for you. So this is the classic on the left and the plus on the right here. Come on. There we go. Right there. In fact, hey, there, look at that. <laughs> See, I was just prompted. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. I was just prompted for that just, just now. So... You saw me update that a minute ago. Both apps are prompting me to update to 1.18. Okay, you will need to restart your R-Finder device two times after the installation is complete. Continue, continue, and there we go. But do you see the way these look right here? This, this, I thought that these were supposed to match. Yeah, let's do that. But apparently, the interfaces look differently. Open. Boy, that was really fast open the interfaces look differently and he says the reason is because it's just different they're different because this one's 8.1 and this one's 9.0 so that is the differences in the r finder devices i've been very happy with this device uh, well i just got this one so i'm gonna be carrying this one a lot more often now this is great to keep in your vehicle it's great to keep in your vehicle because when you travel on road trips you pull this up it uses the GPS to tell to find the repeaters near you. You can just point and click and program them, and you're on the air, whether it's DMR or whether it's analog, dual band analog. So one cool thing about it here is that this charging base, in fact, I, I said I was going to show you guys the, I'll show you guys the USB-C charging unit. This one will charge via USB-C. The charging base that comes with the device comes with a regular wall board that goes in the back of it, and then you have the uh, optional cigarette lighter style plug now what i wanted to do was cut this off and put power poles on it but there's a transformer in here or, or an adapter i should say that is a step down that takes the 12 volt power source and converts it down to nine volts because you need nine volts coming into this base so you can't exactly attach power poles straight to the base uh, okay i wish it was a 12 volt charging unit but it's not but the b1 plus unit will charge via USB C. so i'm going to plug this in here now i'm pretty sure the charging if you use the cradle is faster than charging via USB C. on most devices that's true although USB C charging is really good so let's switch i'm gonna switch back the overhead cam there okay so now here we go so the battery is at 87 percent right there I'm going to plug this in, and there you go. You hear the, uh, I don't know if you heard it. It made a noise. That charging light comes on, and you can see a little lightning bolt indicator over the battery now, so it is charging. That's pretty cool. So USB-C charging. A lot of you don't really like the fact that a lot of ham radios don't have USB charging at all, or the ones that do are maybe micro USB. Don't have to worry about that with this guy. It is USB-C charging. So that's the R-Finder B1 Plus, newest addition to the R-Finder. Well, it's the newest addition to the, the smartphone of the R-Finder family. He's got a tablet that's actually a little bit newer than this one is. You can find all of these things on rfinder.net. And if you go out there and make a purchase or ask him questions, be sure to tell him that you saw that video on Ham Radio 2.0. If you enjoyed this video about the R-Finder, okay, check out these videos over here on this side of the screen. And your word for today is cloud memory. Let's go there. Cloud memory is your word of the day. Put cloud memory in your comment below. That way I know you watched to the end of the video and I will answer your comment, 73.